Hey guys, welcome back to Time Under Tension. This is a continuation of episode 10. Last week, we introduced the idea of the power of choice and how our beliefs and our choice in our beliefs really is what gives us our power in life. So just wanted to give you like a brief recap of that and then kind of move into the next portion. Yeah, I think really what we focused on last week was that we do have these pre-existing beliefs. We do have these thoughts that come up and really to tap into the power that we have within, we have to understand that we aren't those beliefs. We aren't those thoughts. And when we see that there is the ability to choose between once the stimulus happens and, and then that pause before the response, that is where our power is really going to manifest itself. And I think now that we're, we've summarized a little bit more about how we do have that power and how to access that power, where to find it. Now, I think we want to talk a little bit more about um, the healing process that that allows and, uh, and also just some actionable ways to implement um, healing with, with the power of choice. That's great. So I have this habit of getting a book because I am interested in the concept or I hear that it's a good book and then not reading it and then hearing someone else talk about it. And I'm like, oh, that's great. That's probably why I got the book, but I never actually end up reading the book. So I do that a lot, but then I end up kind of learning about the book through hearing other people talk about it. So somehow it ends up working out for me. But I got this book called Thinking Fast and Slow, and it's incredibly long and I was excited to read it. But as soon as I started, I was a little bit overwhelmed. Today, I heard it brought up again. And what I didn't know about the book is it presents this concept of our first reaction to something, whatever it is, a conversation, um, an external stimulus of some kind. Our first response is like our, our automatic our immediate like reactionary response. Like if some, something is said that upsets us, our first response might be like a facial expression or um, some kind of internal resistance to it. And then our second response is the slower response, which is like the overseeing parent where you can sit there, step back and say, okay, why did I feel this? What is my actual reaction going to be? And it's like where you get that first response under control. And I think that that fits so perfectly with this concept of you don't have to identify with your immediate reaction and you are big enough to step outside of it. But I think it's that learning that process that can be kind of challenging because we're so used to identifying with our first response. Yeah, I think that's that was so great. And just allowing to understand what that that's pause between um the stimulus and response that allows for that power of choice because I think one of the things that you just touched on is that there is something that initially happens inside a feeling that we have or a reaction to what someone just said or did that isn't necessarily the outward expression it's not the parent version that you just talked about it isn't the thing that we actually do necessarily, um, which I think that is the area that provides a lot of choice, but also provides that absolute ability to reflect and heal. Because when you enter into that initial reaction and understand that you have, a, you have the power to choose right now, it's like, okay, what was this that I felt? And you can start to ask yourself, well, why did I feel that? And you know, is this considered a trigger in my mind? Like, am I triggered right now? Am I starting to feel a lot inside my body? I'm tense. I'm tight. I want to, I'm angry. I want to unleash on somebody or whatever it is that you're feeling. You're really sad. Um, I think when we disconnect from identifying with that, the thing that initially comes up is now just an indicator that, all right, this is something that I need to pay a little bit more attention to, not necessarily immediately react it and I think that reaction is what happens when we're not taking the time to really see what it is that we're thinking and feeling and um just truly identifying with what it is that we think and feel and after a particular stim particular stimulus so I think that that's that's so good and just pointing out that 
there is these two things that kind of can happen in that space and both of them can lead to healing but both of them also if we do tend to just identify can lead to a lot of reactionary um and you know actions that we kind of wish we didn't do per se and then it doesn't allow for any of the healing to happen i think the power is in that pause that you mentioned I think we live in a society where everything is moving so fast and we need to be the, the quickest. We need to be seen as um, the sharpest. And a lot of times that has to do with speed or that's how we interpret it. Like we're trying to constantly meet the fast paced demands. But the problem is like reflection is a process. So you might feel the pressure to respond immediately within a situation, but a lot of times knowing yourself enough to say, okay, I need to stop and step back or just continue to listen before I respond. That's where you're going to find your power. And the added bonus of slowing down and listening, if this is based on a situation where you're interacting with someone is you might hear something that helps you dissolve or address the, your initial reaction as well. Like something I struggle with that I haven't really realized before is anger. I don't really identify with that emotion because I don't feel angry towards people. But the more I've been doing this deep dive into my initial reaction and then where that tends to lead for me, if I allow that chain reaction to occur as it normally plays out is I have anger. I just end up directing it towards self but it starts out as some kind of threat externally usually, or some perceived threat. So say mm -hmm. I bring something up to someone, like I, I want to voice a need to someone and I'm nervous to do so. And say I present the need and they don't hear me. Then I feel upset because I feel unheard, but my immediate reaction isn't be angry at them. I take that feeling because I was taught that anger is a bad thing. And in my life as a child, especially I was, it was demonstrated to me that being angry at someone is very negative and like turns just leads to a lot of negative outcomes. So I told myself I would never be like an angry, aggressive person, but I'll have that feeling of like, I feel threatened because I don't feel heard or I don't feel like my needs are going to be met. So I feel this anger, but it turns into like a self-loathing. Like it flips around really quickly. If I give into it, I'm like, I'm upset. And I'm like, I shouldn't have asked. I can't believe I'm so selfish that I would ask for something like that. This is what I get every time that I even ask for this. Like, this is what happens. Like, how could I be so self-centered? And I go down this rabbit hole. And for me, the way that eventually ends up expressing itself is like, in the past, it has been more of like a self-harm mindset but it also goes into my tendency to want to control food because I feel this lack of control and powerlessness in this ability to voice what I need. And so I allow this chain reaction of anger to trickle down into my, my relationship with myself and then eventually my relationship with food. But the power lies in the pause of going back and saying, whoa, this situation is making me feel this this like buildup of anxiety internally. And if I can catch it right then, I can identify and meet my own need there instead of trying to address this end result issue that's happening, regardless of how that expresses itself, whether it's issues with food or issues with addiction or issues with just poor self image. It's like you almost have more power by taking that time initially to detach from your initial reaction, but also to acknowledge the reaction so that mm. you can address it appropriately, identify that it is a valid need and that the need is not going to be met down the line once it's turned into this bomb and just become like much larger than it ever needed to be. It comes from pausing and addressing it at the root. That's so good. I am, I think you're, kind of just showing everybody the steps that the deep dive that you're talking about going inward it doesn't happen that quickly where you're able to do all of those things I think that's important to share is that you've done a lot of the very challenging work of 
sitting in that pause and really acknowledging and validating what it is that you're feeling in the third person almost. Um, and I think that's really important to share because you just said all of these incredible things that you're now self-aware of that now when you enter into a situation where you feel like you don't have that voice and that anger comes up, you're really able to have power immediately over it because you've done the deep dive and the pause and because you've looked and kind of found that trail led back to whatever it was, the trauma that initi initially initiated the now nervous system response that you're feeling when you are triggered by something. Um, and I think what I wanna share in this is that I, I am also reading this book, uh, Claim Your Power and Mastin Kip talks about how it is so important to acknowledge and validate your the trauma, the root cause of the original incident. And the way to get back there is to see your feelings and emotions as indicators that something is off here, that your nervous system doesn't feel safe in this situation because of a past trauma. And so in that pause, you're really able to start the healing process because that's an indicator that something prior in the past has led you to feel unsafe in this space. So for you to feel more safe, now you're latching to control over food. That ends up being your way of, of coping that led to safety when you're feeling, when your nervous system is feeling unsafe and that now you can learn how to tell your, that part of you, it is safe. It's, this is a situation where I'm safe and it doesn't lead to the coping mechanism of feeling the need to control food. And so you start to heal what it is that you're seeing as a symptom with, that really is just a symptom of, a, of your body just trying to keep you safe in a place that is causing you a little bit of um, anger or you know whatever the feeling is, anxiousness. Uh, and I think it's... It's something that going back into the, the root cause is challenging and can cause a lot of emotional distress and uh, it's super challenging, but the reward like you're expressing is so great because you're able to enter into whatever it is, this situation, knowing that you aren't feeling heard so you can express what you need, but also know that you are whole still. You're not feeling lesser than or any of these things. So when when you're going into this pause, knowing that it's going to be a challenging experience, but uncovering the the root cause of the trauma that happened and validating it, being a still staying self-aware and knowing that you don't need to identify with the the thoughts or the feelings in that space, but knowing that you need healing in this place. You need healing in this particular area. And whatever that particular root cause is, not having a voice, that's amazing that you find that and you can start to then move forward to claim the power of moving forward, like you just said. Um, and I think that was a long explanation, but it really is important for me personally to share that because for me, when I would enter into this pause, I wouldn't address the past at all. I would just be thinking that I could think my way out of it just because I was aware. And yes, I'm self-aware that this thought's coming up because of something, but I was completely dismissing all of it, thinking I'm just going to think my way. Like, I know I just need to replace this thought with truth or, you know, I now I'm aware. So I'm just going to do the, the next thing that I do. I'm just going to make sure I do it and have the willpower when really it's like, no, my, my body needs the healing. Like, it's, it's not something that I can just do with the willpower in my mind. It's like something happened to me, to my body. And that original incident is the thing that I need to go back, find where it is in my body and say, all right, you're feeling like you're unsafe, my body, my nervous system. In this future situation or this present situation, because of this past trauma, but you're safe now. And so for me, an example is like, when I am 
feeling any kind of lack of um, wholeness, when I don't feel whole, when I feel, okay, here's an example. Yesterday, you text me something about purpose and passion, and it led to me being irritated and agitated. And your text was so insightful and so profound. And I, once I saw what I was feeling, I realized that that was a very similar kind of approach that growing up was very condemning. You don't know enough. You're not living up to your full potential. It's more lecture based. It's you're lesser than you're not doing the things that you can do because you're not whole essentially so in my childhood experiences I'm getting lectured to talk to not even able to express my emotions so when I feel like someone is lecturing at me now I tense up and get all tight and I'm mad and angry and then all of a sudden my safety is also to fill myself with food so I feel like I need to be whole because this thing that happened before is making me feel like I'm not so my safety is then to go fill myself with food when really I need to just know that in my own self I'm I'm whole and this interaction with you was you just loving me fully and understanding that I'm in this place of diving into passion and purpose and it was another avenue of thought and perspective. And I think one thing to note about that is we are on the same page with this stuff. So we have this incredible training ground together to have these conversations and to say, hey, I'm having an emotional response to something that you're saying right now to process it out loud with each other and then to move past it without attaching a lot of emotions or condemnation to that interaction. But not everyone has a situation like that. I would say before our relationship, I definitely didn't have anyone to talk to where I could process these emotions without the other person becoming defensive or not really understanding it. And so that's where I think that depending on your needs as a person, I think either making sure you have a good support system where you have someone you can talk to about this, even if it's a friend where you kind of explain to them, hey, I'm, I'm working on self-reflection right now. Um, I would like to talk to you about some of the responses that I have, but like, no, first and foremost, that the things that come up aren't about you. They're reactions that I'm having independently. And I would just like to talk to you about them knowing that deep down, like, I love you. We love each other. We have an understanding. Now I just need to be able to talk through this stuff because it is very difficult to just think through it on your own. And if you don't have a relationship like that, we had a friendship or whatever, ha having a counselor, I think can be helpful because it's someone, an obje objective party with whom you can talk about these things and say, Hey, I had this situation where I was talking to my boss and they said this, and then I felt angry and I'm trying to process through this emotion of anger and I want to, you know, think about why I'm having this response. So you have a way to kind of talk about it. Journaling is also a great option here, but I think that just sometimes it needs to be something, some other grounds other than trying to figure it out in the middle of the conversation with that person or by yourself, like keeping it all in your mind in the same place that's kind of creating this chain reaction isn't always super helpful. So being able to have some kind of like external output where you can pour it into a journal so you can actually start to reflect on it more objectively as if it were data or within a conversation that's outside of the actual situation that's um, triggering a response so that you have that like training ground through which to examine your thoughts and start to break down this reaction you're having is really helpful. So from a tangible standpoint, you know, this all sounds great and well, but if in your, you're in the middle of a conversation that's making you upset, that may not be the time to turn to the person 
who's upsetting you and has no, no idea what you're doing in terms of self-work and being like, you're pissing me off right now. Like that's just going to cause an explosive reaction most of the time. So understanding when and how it's appropriate to say, Hey, I need a second to process and then knowing where to go to process, be that with another person or journaling or something like that, I think is really, really helpful. Yeah. That's good. So I think, you know, one thing you kind of mentioned when we were talking about this beforehand was the idea of being a victim. And I think that's where it goes back to, this is our power. Like we all have this. I think that concept of being the hero of your journey we talked about recently, we can all be the hero of our journey or we can all be the victims of our journey. Back in one of our first episodes, we talked about mono bobsledding and the idea of being in that bobsled and like you, you hit a curve and you learn how to like anticipate it and adjust course so that you can ride it appropriately. I think that that there's that. And then the other approach would be like, you're laying in the bobsled and you're just getting thrown around these curves. Like either way, life is going to hit you. It's just, are you going to be prepared and feel like you're the one in control as you're like riding the waves that come, or are you just going to let them take you and decide that, you know, you're just a victim to every curve that happens. Like there's two ways you're going downhill either way. <laughs> so I think it's like, you can decide by how actively you decide to live your life by actively harnessing your thoughts, how you're going to handle this ride on the way down. Yeah. I think that's great. It's, so important to claim your power for that reason I think I think victimization and having the victim consciousness is something that's um it's kind of a touchy subject I think um because when things are happening to us it's really challenging to not just take it somewhat easier path in identifying with that and saying like all of these things are happening to me and you know because yes absolutely they are and you are getting thrown around but you have power you have power to choose to not go down that path where you just think everything is happening to you and you can't do anything about it. It's, it's this ability to say, whoever, whatever is causing this pain on you no longer gets to have the power over you. You get to have the power now. And that all is coming with what you're saying, being able to harness your thoughts and choose to see the good in what's happening and I think something that kind of ties into the healing process of claiming your power is knowing your future as well and what I mean by that is knowing that if you have breath you're serving a purpose so you have a purpose to live out and connecting with that purpose is helpful because all of the things that then are happening to you you can start to really shift definitely acknowledge the fact that something happened to you you need to feel those emotions and give them validation but also have the power to choose that you get to claim the power now over self and continue on this purpose of life that you have finding the good and the things that are happening to you understanding that these these things might be just other areas for you to set healthy boundaries for yourself or or just being able to practice claiming your power and maybe it goes back to that root belief you know if you believe that last week we talked about the universe is hostile or not like that's a core belief Another one would be you have a purpose or it's all aimless. 
Another would be like, it's planned or it's random. Like you can choose your path. You can believe that everything in life is random and you're just experiencing this ride as an, you know, a bunch of cells following some kind of evolutionary course. That's fine if you believe that. But for myself, I find that, that does not allow me to live my fullest life. I'm not very joyful if I feel like everything in life is happening to me and I have no control and I'm simply just following a set of pre-programmed commands. But I found that the more that I believe that I have purpose, the more that I believe that I'm a unique being with a yes, pre-planned purpose and that God has laid out this plan for my life that will leave me the most fulfilled if I'm in alignment with it, the more I enjoy my day to day. And you have the power to choose that. Like you get to choose your worldview. It's not about denying the truth. It's about taking in the things around you, adopt it as a theorem for your life. Say, okay, I'm going to live as if there is a purpose, as if there is a God or greater being or the universe is working in my favor, not as a hostile environment before my greatest good. I'm going to live as if people are inherently good. I'm going to live as if I am powerful and as if I do have worth inherently, as if I do have gifts and things to offer this world, just try it. Just try that for a week and make all your decisions from that basis and see if your life is more enjoyable than a life lived out of chaos, out of lack of purpose. You know, in physics, it's like everything moves towards chaos unless there's an external energy enacted on the system. So if you're not the one guiding the system of your life, it's going to naturally move towards chaos. Mm. So apply a positive force into the, into your energy field, into your life, the variables that make up your life and see where it heads from there. And if you have a belief that then doesn't serve your greatest good or doesn't leave you feeling more fulfilled, then step back, realize that you don't have to identify that with that as an inherent part of who you are, shift your thoughts and see, okay, now with this thought leading my life, how does my quality of life improve? How do the people around me improve? Like start to see it as a process. Like you're allowed to evolve. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to develop beliefs over time, but know who you are, know what you believe and operate with integrity from that foundation. Yeah. So good. I think something else we talked about in a past episode too, is like pain has purpose and just being able to show compassion for others who may be experiencing the same thing. Um, and I think that's just another, uh, another perspective to add to the pain that you're experiencing is now that you're experiencing this, you can go and help someone else who's also struggling with that or show compassion and comfort that shared human experience. I think that that was so good. I think what you said is so powerful and um, there's just one last thing I kind of want to add in is that we do have the power to choose to change and we can in any moment we have the choice and something we've been talking about is like when's the right time all these things like right now it's right now it's, this is the time to do all of these things to start entering into this process to start entering into this journey because everything on the other side of it is this abundant joy that we can't even grasp and this full this fullness that we all are craving it's all it's what we all want is connection and fulfillment and joy and peace and all of those things come when we are shifting our perspective one of the this was the last thing I wanted to share was that a good way to go about entering into this process is understanding the stages at which they show up. So the first thing to like, even if someone else or something external isn't necessarily causing anything in your life, this is a way that you can still enter into the inward journey, into that process to uncover some of these things that do show up and have that joy and fulfillment and love and, and peace that you crave so much is 
looking at your behaviors. What are the behaviors that you have that keep you stuck or make you feel like you're not living? What are those behaviors? Identify them. And then the next step after that is to see what thoughts and stories you're telling yourself or thoughts that seem to come up that lead to those behaviors. Then all of a sudden you have these emotions that we're talking about and that could be caused by something external or if you're just going through this process, even talking about or thinking about the behaviors you have, those are gonna afflict some emotions. And so then we're entering into this space where we're able to now process that pause again. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? Where am I feeling it in my body? And then it's your beliefs. Okay, is there a particular belief that I need to challenge right now? Like, yes, we want to have these beliefs that we are living out of integrity, but we also need to know that our beliefs have to be flexible. We have to be willing to allow all of the things that could be possible because we're infinite to be possible. So if we have a belief, sometimes those beliefs only serve us for a certain period of time and then they need to be leveled up. So what is the belief that you're experiencing right now that could be leading to the emotion that's leading to the thought that's leading to the behavior? Okay, great. Now we're here. We know these beliefs. All right, great. Now we can really kind of identify when was the initial first moment that this happened, that, that trauma, that original incident. And then the healing process really, really can start to just take, take off. That's really helpful. And I think having like a tangible process to follow where it's like, okay, I'm having this reaction, then, then what? Knowing where to kind of go from there and how to do that, that dive of self-reflection is helpful. And I think another thing that you said that I really appreciate is that the time is right now. Like, don't put this off. You do not have to understand. This isn't a, even though there is a good process to follow, it's not set in stone and everyone's journey is going to be a little bit different than, than the next person's. But here's a blueprint on how to start self-reflecting. Know that the time is right now. Like the only prerequisite for living a better life is the awareness that there is a better life to be lived. That's mm. it. You don't actually have to know all the steps ahead of time you definitely don't have to know where you're going because I assure you, even if you think you know where you're going, you're probably not right. But if you follow yourself in that you're following your passion and learning to reconnect with your intuition and really learning to detach from those emotions and beliefs so that they, the uprooting of them does not uproot who you are as a person. Like you can detach from them and develop them over time and learn that you are an independent being who is using these beliefs as tools to get through this life in the fullest way possible. That's a pretty good starting point. And that's really all you need to know. And if you feel unsatisfied, if you feel like you're living a life at half mast or a black and white life, and you're not feeling full at the end of your day, empty because you're giving everything you have, but full because you know that you're pouring all that you have into it then you already have a sliver of that awareness that there's something more. And I think that knowing that there is a way to stop, to step back from what you're experiencing and thinking and to take hold of your life in a more active way is, is the first way to start restoring that power. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a really cool journey, y'all. It leads to fulfillment. These are tears of joy. It's just, it's something that can change your whole world. So this week, I want you guys to stop. Stop. When you have a reaction, just stop, examine it, validate it, and trace back from there. Find the method that you need, whether that's a person to talk to or a journal, something to start processing these things and really start to take hold of your life, knowing that at the core of everything, you are valid, your feelings are valid, even if they don't serve you anymore. So start to unravel them and rebuild the thought processes, the, the actions, and just the purpose for your life um, that really serves you and helps you live your fullest life. Awesome. 
that is it. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back next week for more. Really appreciate you guys always for supporting, and I'm excited to continue sharing this journey.